It's R A and R M. Am. That is Am. That is A N M. That Am A N M. That Am A N M video. <laughs> If you're into fun and you love to play, if you like funny jokes that put you away, if you like to dance to a slamming sound and you like having lots of friends around, and if you're one of those kids who lives by the rule that sad is bad and happy is cool, oh, little buddy, you're about to see you're in the very best place that you could be. Hey, it's Land Shots, play along with kids come to play along in fun things and all we ever do. Yeah, it's Land Shots. Join the kids and play along. We got a lot of good stuff for you. Bounce your bottom in your chair. Bounce it here, bounce it there. And with tender, loving care. Bounce it, bounce it everywhere. Bounce it fast, bounce it slow. Bounce it high, bounce it low. Sing while you bounce along. One more chorus of a song. Land chops, play along. With kids come to play along. Especially you. I got a tail, a whale of a tail, a tail that'll never go stale. I got a tail, I think you will hail as a whale of a whale of a tail. It's old, but good, and I can state the author's fate, and nothing short of great. So put me in jail, or give me a sail, and I will sail away. If I haven't got a whale of a whale of a tail for you today, hey, hey, have I got a story for you today? Do you know the story of Cinderella? Did you watch the movie? How do you know it then? I know it by the book. By the book. Okay, well, we're, then then you can really help us as we play My mom this read theme. it. I don't know how to read it. Oh, you, you'll learn how to read real soon. Real soon. Because you're six, right? Yeah. Yeah. When well, you're about seven or eight, you'll really start reading. Um, and in the meanwhile, I know how to read. Are you seven? A little older. Oh. Um, and so I can read. Why are you laughing? Um, so I can read, and I'm going to read the story of Cinderella, and I need your help. Will you help me? Yeah. Yay! Thank you. I know you will, Corey. And every time I look up, you guys can fill in the missing word. Oh, no, me. I'm going to do it all by myself. No, you're not. They're all going to do it. I'm going to do it first. Yeah, I bet you are. Uh, now, let me just tell you the story. I want to tell you so that you know it, and so you'll know what word to fill in. Cinderella is the story of a girl who has a wicked stepmother and two wicked stepsisters, and the king decides to give a fancy dress ball, but Cinderella cannot go to the ball because she doesn't have a pretty gown. She only has rags, and so she's very sad. Very sad. This whole thing is so far is very sad. Pathetic. <laughs> yes, okay. Um, the fairy godmother turns her orange pumpkin into a... a carrot. A carriage, yes. The fairy godmother turns the six mice into... Horses. Horses. Baby pigs. <laughs> Baby pigs. <laughs> she turns Cinderella's rags into a beautiful gown, and she puts glass slippers on her feet, and she says, be home by midnight. And then, I know this story perfectly. It's an easy story. I could do it with you. We don't need them. What do you mean, we don't need them? I want to do it alone. No, we're not doing it alone. We're going to do it with them, and with them at home. I'm going to say all this stuff first. You're going to say it first, you silly. All right, now, everybody, you fill in the missing word whenever I look up. You're going to have to talk fast, because yeah, I know all about you. Here we go. Cinderella lived with her wicked stepmother and her two wicked step ladders. No. Step ladders? No. Her step wicked stepmother and her wicked step sister. Oh yes, yeah, sisters. I knew it all along. I just forgot. Yes, they they were not step ladders. Of course, they were social climbers. But they now, weren't step mothers. No, they were step ladders. No, 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 no. Well, one day. All the rich ladies of the land were invited to attend a fancy dress bat. Fancy dress bat? No. no. Ball. A ball, a fancy dress 
ball. I wanted to know if you were listening. Yeah, and it was announced that at the ball, the prince would choose a bride. And Cinderella's stepmother was excited, and so were the two wicked stepladders. No. Stepsisters. Did you get that, stepsisters? I bet you did. And so, as the stepmother and the wicked stepsisters left for the ball, Cinderella sat and cried because she was feeling very wet. Sad. <laughs> wet? Yeah, she cried big tears. No, what was she feeling? Very sad. Very sad. She was so sad. Oh, this is pathetic. And suddenly, out of nowhere, there appeared Cinderella's fairy... Godmother. Godmother. And Cinderella said, I'm the only one who isn't going to the fancy dress bath. Ball. Ball, ball. I got it that time. And her fairy godmother told Cinderella to go into the vegetable garden and pick a big orange carrot. carrot. No! no. no. What was it? Pumpkin. A pumpkin. Did you get pumpkin? Yeah. I did, only my mouth said the wrong thing. <laughs> Your mouth. She picked a pumpkin, and then the fairy godmother told Cinderella to catch six mice. mice. Oh, I didn't know that one. What's she going to do with them? You'll hear. Next, the fairy godmother raised her magic wand, and the pumpkin the pumpkin was turned into a beautiful... Baby, baby carrot! <laughs> baby carrots, that's funny. And the six mice were turned into... Monkeys! No, not <laughs> monkeys. <laughs> they were... Horses! Six horses! horses. Eggs. And finally, the fairy godmother touched Cinderella's head with her magic wand and gave Cinderella... A headache! No, she didn't give her a headache, you goose. <laughs> no, what happened to Cinderella's rags? Yes, go ahead. Go ahead, Talcia. A dress. A dress, a beautiful gown. And, and on her feet, Cinderella was wearing two bananas. beautiful... <laughs> she was not wearing bananas. She was wearing glass shovels. Um, they were glass slippers. And before she left, the fairy godmother warned Cinderella, you must listen for the clock to strike 12 bells so that you will be home by Christmas. No. <laughs> so that you'll be home by... Midnight. Midnight. And when the clock strikes 12 bells, it's 12 o'clock midnight. Well, Cinderella got to the ball, and the prince found Cinderella to be so nice. He only danced with her, and Cinderella was having so much fun, she forgot the time. And suddenly she heard 12 bells as the clock struck gold. No, the clock struck midnight. And Cinderella raced out of the castle, dropping one of her glass shovels. No, one of her glass slippers. And Cinderella ran out of the castle, dropping one of her glass shovels. No, 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 no. Cinderella jumped into her coach and sped off toward home. And the prince ran after her, but he couldn't catch her. He picked up the glass shoe she had dropped, and, she... and he swore that he would marry any woman whose foot fit into the glass slipper. And the next day, the prince went from house to house, saying to all the ladies, Try on this glass shovel. No. Slipper. Try on this glass Slipper. 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 And when he reached Cinderella's house, he tried the shoe on each of the wicked stepladders. No, 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 no! Stepsisters. Step Thank you, Robin. Stepsisters. Nobody fit into this glass slipper until Cinderella tried on it on, and it fit perfectly. perfectly. And Cinderella and the prince had a big wedding, and they lived happily ever, ever after. Mm. See, I knew that one. We all knew that one. And Thank now we all know the story. Yes, I did so know it. And now we all know the they, story they of... You did not, Lamb Chop. I did so, Robin. You did not. I did so. You did not. did so. You did so. You did so. You did so. You did so. I did, I did, I did, I did, I did. Can you do any bird imitations? Oh, yeah, I do bird in... Well, actually, it's more like a impression. You do bird impressions? Uh-huh. And what do you do to do your bird imitation? I eat worms. <laughs> no. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, Why do you ask? Well, I ask because... I ask because... I have a story. Surprise, surprise. And the story is all about a fox. I don't do fox imitation. Sure you do. What do you mean? Well, there's a fox. Is that a real fox? No, no. It's just a little soft, plush toy. But it's what a fox looks like. I, I don't do fox. Sure you do fox. A fox is a member of the doggy family. Is that what it's called? Scientific-like? <laughs> Scientific-like, no. It's a member of the canine family. Yeah. And <clears throat> canines, doggies, when they're little, go, yip, yip, 
And so whenever I talk about a fox, you go, yep, yep. Well, yeah, that's good. Let me hear you do it. The fox. Good. Did I do it? Uh-huh. How do you hear? Oh, I listen so hard. And um, it's about a crow. I know a crow go. What does crow go? Crow go, caw, caw. Oh, good. Thank you. Uh, can you do that? Can you go, caw, caw? Oh, good. Mm, thank you. Um, can you do that, Mia? Did they do that, too? They did that, too. That's wonderful. And now, this also is a story about a piece of cheese. Yum, yum. Oh, that's good. That's good. Well, whenever I say cheese, I'd like you to go yum, yum. So let's practice that. It had a piece of cheese. Yum, yum. I've got a story, an old, old story. Yes, I've got a story that I hope will please. I've got a story, an old, old story about a fox. Yeah, yeah. A crow <gasps> and some cheese. Yum, yum. One day, long, long ago, a crow <gasps> looking for a meal saw some cheese yum, yum. sitting on my windowsill to which she promptly decided to steal and as I watched she flew to my window ledge and took the cheese yum, yum. in her beak then she landed in a tree and gloated to herself that she'd stolen her meals for a week ah oh, but someone else saw the crow <gasps> It was a fox, yip, yip. and they're sly. And as I watched and listened, the fox yip, yip. praised the crow ah, ah. to the sky. He said, Madam Crow, ah, ah. you are the loveliest creature that I have ever seen. Madam Crow, ah, ah. how do you keep your claws? So sharp and so clean. Oh, Madam Crow, I have heard your voice is beautiful as can be. Madam Crow, Madam Crow, won't you sing for me? Well, she was so delighted by the fox that she opened her beak to sing. Which caused the cheese yum, yum. to fall to the ground. Now wasn't that a foolish thing? For the fox yip, yip. ate the cheese. Yum, yum. Yes, he had the meal instead. And as I laughed at the crow, oh, oh. this is what I said. Just be yourself. Don't try to be. Different, but no one will appreciate the change. Have faith in whatever you are and follow your very own lucky star. Just be yourself, and you'll make those who love you happy. For you are the one they want to see. Very good. You were very good. Were they better than me? No, come on. This is not a competition. They had a good time and you had a good time. Did you have a good time? Oh, I heard them. Did you? Yeah, they said yes. Good. I'm so glad. And I I know the moral of the story and you don't. How do you know they don't? Do you? They said no. They didn't say no. How do you know? <laughs> come on. Um, I'm sure they'd like to hear what you think the moral of the story is. Would you? Go ahead, say it. The moral of the story of the fox, the crow, and the cheese is don't talk with your mouth full. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. What do you think the moral of the story is? Oh, maybe they're right. Who knows? 
Who knows? Who knows? I'm going to tell you the story of Mary's little lamb. No, no. Don't tell me you know that story. I know you do. But you're going to play two parts in this story. You know how lambs go ba That's how they go. Really. Anytime you hear me mention lamb, you and you go ba Let's try it. Mary had a little lamb. Ba Good. And its fleece was white as snow. And whenever I talk about snow, you go brrrr, because snow is cold, and it's going to snow a lot in this story, because this is the further adventures of Mary's little lamb. Here we go. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. It followed her to school one day, which was against the rule. It made the children laugh and play to see a lamb bah, at school. And so the teacher sent it out, but still it lingered near and waited patiently about till Mary would appear. That day, as these things happened, there was a heavy snow. It piled four feet off the ground and on the lamb, bah, you know? All throughout that morning, the snow <laughs> fell on and on. And when at last the school was out, they thought the lamb <laughs> was gone. The teacher said lambs <laughs> shouldn't be at school. That's what that proved. When all at once a bah <laughs> was heard and a pile of snow <laughs> moved. And all at once, as Mary looked, and to her great surprise, the pile of snow <laughs> magically developed two enormous eyes. It was the lamb. <laughs> okay, the lamb <laughs> can stay, the teacher stated. And from that day, it went to school. You know what? It graduated. <laughs> <laughs>
And the pig said, <laughs> And the little red hen said, well, Then I'll thresh it myself. And she did. And when she had all those greens, she put them in a bag, and she said, Oh, who's going to help me carry this heavy bag of wheat to the mill where it could get ground into flour? And the duck said, Right, right. And the mouse said, Not I. And the pig said, Duh, not die. And the little red hen said, Well, then I'll do it myself. And she did. And when it was flour, she brought it home, and she said, who will help me bake this flour into bread? And the duck said, right, right. And the mouse said, not I. Good. And the pig said, not I. And the little red hen said, well, then I'll bake it myself. And she did. 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 And when the smell of freshly baked bread was floating all over the courtyard, ah. Oh, and she took a crusty loaf of bread out of the oven, and she said, Now, who will help me eat the bread? And what do you think the duck said? I will. <laughs> right. And what do you think the mouse said? I will. And what do you think the pig said? Duh, I will. And the little red hen said, uh, No, you won't. You didn't help me plant or cut or thresh or carry or bake, and now you're certainly not going to help me eat. My little chicks will do that. And do you know what? They ate it all up. The end. This is the story of the king and... What's your name? That's it. That's the title of the story. It's all about the king and you. Once upon a time, there was a lonely old king, and he lived in a lonely old castle on a star millions and millions of miles out into space. And this poor lonely old king was so far away from everybody that he had nobody to talk to except Max, his computer. You know, a computer's okay, but all it can do is answer questions. It can't tell jokes or riddles. It can't carry on a conversation. So this lonely old king was lonely. But one day, the lonely old king called Max his computer, and then he dialed some dials, and he said, Max, what can I do? I'm so lonely. Well, Max blinked red, and his sprockets sprocked, and his cranks cranked, and before you could say blast off, Max said, Why don't you invite an Earth person to visit you? I have in my memory banks facts, perfect facts about everybody on Earth. And the king said, Ooh, tell me a little bit about the perfectly perfect person. What color are the eyes of the perfectly perfect person. And Max said, The eyes of the perfectly perfect person are... What color are your eyes? Yeah, your eyes. What color are they? That's what Max said. And the king said, Oh, and what color is the hair of my perfectly perfect person? And Max said, The hair of your perfectly perfect person is... What color is your hair? That's what Max said. And then the king said, oh, this is so exciting. He said, um, my perfectly perfect person, it obviously isn't an it. It's either a girl or a boy. Which is it? And Max said, your perfectly perfect person is a... What are you, a girl or a boy? That's what Max said. Well, the king was jumping up and down now with excitement, and he said, um, where does my perfectly perfect person live? And now Sprocket sprocked and cranks cranked, and Max huffed and he puffed, and then Max said, your perfectly perfect person lives in a city called... What city do you live in? Goodness, that's just what Max said. Well, now the king was so excited, he said, My perfectly perfect person has a father. What is the name of the father of my perfectly perfect person? And Max said, The perfectly perfect person's father's name is... What is your father's name? No, not Daddy. No, not Pop. No, not Papa. Your father has a first name. What's his first name? 
That's what Max said. And then the king said, my perfectly perfect person has a mother. What is the name of the mother of my perfectly perfect person? And Max said, the name of the mother of the perfectly perfect person is... What's your mother's name? No, not mom. No, not mommy. What's your mother's first name? That's what Max said. Well, by now, the king was just beside himself. He said, now I'd like to know, please, the most important fact of all, what is the name of my perfectly perfect person? And now Max blinked red and he blinked blue and his sprockets sprocked and his cranks cranked and his dials dialed and he huffed and he puffed and he popped and he panted. And guess what happened? Nothing. Nothing. And so the king said, yes, yes, what is the name of my perfectly perfect person? And Max said, don't rush me. I think we're going to have to help, Max. You're going to have to tell me what your name is. Good and loud, what's your name? That's what Max said. And the king said, hooray, we know who my perfectly perfect person is. So let my private royal spaceship blast off and invite the perfectly perfect person on Earth to come and visit me at my castle. And so don't you be surprised if someday the royal spaceship lands in your front yard or right at your door and invites you to come and visit the lonely old king at his castle. So put me in jail or give me a sail and I will sail away. I didn't have a whale of a whale of a tail for you today. This is the song that doesn't end. Yes, it goes on and on, my friend. Some people started singing it, not knowing what it was. And they'll continue singing it forever just because this is the song that doesn't end. Oh, no. Yes, it goes on and on, my friend. That's enough, guys. Some people started singing it, not knowing what it was. Turn you off. Yes, it goes on and on, my friend. Okay. Some okay. Start I get the joke. It, not knowing what it was, and they'll continue singing it forever. I can't believe you guys. This is the song oh, oh, oh. That does it end. Okay. Yes, I've had it. That's it. That's it. Friend. What are you doing? Some people started singing Why? it, not what knowing what it was. Hey. And they'll continue no, no, this, singing no, no, no. this is the last time, right? This, this is, is it. This is it. You guys are going to keep that up. I want you to go far, far away. Go, go, go. No, no, no. Keep on going. Woo, woo. This is the song that... Charlie, horse. No, no, stop, stop, stop. Charlie, stop. I want you to go away. Go away. And don't slam the... Door. Hey, what's that? Oh, I know it's a P. Wait a sec, I could do it. Para shoot. Paragon. They're all gone. Well, that's true. All gone. Bye bye. Bye bye.